Brock, Sean McDonough with Jerry Remy to be joined shortly by Dan Roach. Delighted to have you with us. If you're a baseball fan, this weekend is what it's all about. Red Sox have closed the ground from ten and a half games back to three and a half behind the New York Yankees as they begin this three game weekend series first of consecutive weekends on which the Red Sox and Yankees will go head to head they'll play three next weekend at Fenway Park the starting lineups brought to you by Southwest Airlines are more than twenty eight hundred nonstop daily flights to sixty destinations all across the country. The Red Sox have Johnny Damon in center field, Mark Bellhorn at second base, Manny Ramirez in left, David Ortiz, the DH and cleanup hitter, Trot Nixon in the starting lineup in right field, Jason Veritek, a villain here in New York for his role in the unpleasantries between these two teams in late July, catching and batting six. Kevin Millar at first base, Orlando Cabrera the shortstop, and Kevin Euclid for the injured Bill Miller at third base, batting ninth against one of the best stories of the year for the Yankees. They'd be in trouble without him, El Duque, Orlando Hernandez. They should, would be, Don, uh, excuse me, Sean, 8-0 and on the season for El Duque, the 2.49 ERA. Now, when you look at the teams that he's faced, the majority of those teams, as a matter of fact, almost all of those teams have been under 500, but still, without El Duque, this Yankee ball club would be in tremendous trouble. This guy was out all of last season, missed all of 2003, covering from a partial tear in his rotator cuff. He was there for really anybody to have uh, this year. The Yankees re-signed him, and what a great story it's been for New York. And the defense behind him tonight. The Yankees are fifth in the American League in team fielding at 983. They have Hideki Matsui in left, Kenny Lofton with excellent speed in center, Gary Sheffield in right, Alex Rodriguez, Derek Jeter, Miguel Cairo, John Olderud, the infield from third to first, and Jorge Posada behind the plate. Under Wendelstead calls the balls and strikes. Mike Winters at first, Bruce Preming, the crew chief at second, Tim Timmons at third. It's the same umpiring crew that worked the series the last time these two teams met in late July when they had the bench clearing brawl featuring Veritek, Arroyo, Alex Rodriguez, and several others. First pitch of the series right down the middle. Strike one from El Duque. The first pitch at 7.08. Red Sox from El Duque tonight. We'll see the fastball, a couple of different types of change-ups, the curveball, and sometimes an Ephus pitch he will throw now. First pitch at 7.08. The temperature 73 degrees with very high humidity, 98%. A little lob, shallow center. Lofton is there. One out. Lofton got the call in center field tonight over Bernie Williams in part because of that excellent speed he used to run down that pop fly. They are the standings of which we were speaking earlier and the Red Sox at the moment in command of the race for the wild card in the American League five and a half ahead of the Anaheim Angels there at home tonight hosting the Texas Rangers. Mark Bellhorn the hitter. And he takes an off speed breaking ball for a strike. 265 for Mark. 235 left handed. 17 homers. 10 of them from the left. And 77 runs batted in. Outside a ball. Well, throughout El Duque's career, at times he has had a lot of trouble with left handers, but this season, lefties are only 252. That number has really dropped. I mean, for many years, lefties were well over 300 against El Duque. Breaking ball nearly hit Bellhorn. As Jerry said, anybody could have had El Duque. He was hanging around in February and early March waiting for somebody to sign him. The Yankees did sign him to a minor league contract on March 6th. And with injuries to their starting pitching staff, most notably right now Kevin Brown, now with a broken hand after he punched a wall in their clubhouse. His left hand is broken. They're not sure if he'll be back. Mel Stottlemyre, the pitching coach, and Joe Torrey have been struggling for answers and El Duque was a great answer for them. Fastball just inside. Well, from a Yankees point of view as he uh, El Duque just misses the inside corner with this fastball. I think he's the perfect guy to start off this series. It is a big series. There's a lot of tension here but El Duque all that postseason experience he has with the Yankees not affected by that. 
He hasn't faced the Red Sox since the regular season in 2002. His payoff pitch to Bellhorn lined at a right of base hit. Well, Bellhorn got a break when the 2 2 pitch that was very close was called a ball, and he took advantage of the opportunity with a line single and a right. That looked like a change up that time that uh, Bellhorn is able to go down, make good solid contact, and get the line drive up over the head of Miguel Cairo. That ball actually looked like it was out of the strike zone. That's the first time that Mark Bellhorn has faced El Duque, and he ends up with a base hit. Bellhorn at first with one out, top of the first. And the batter Manny Ramirez, 41 homers to lead the American League. 313 average, 118 runs batted in. He's third in the league and runs batted in. He's eighth in batting average. Three homers in 30 career at bats against El Duque. And for Manny this year, against the Yankees, six home runs. In the 13 games played to date between these two teams, he has more homers against the Yankees than anybody in Major League Baseball this year. Matter of fact, the Red Sox have used the long ball to take the upper hand in the season series. This is the 14th meeting this year between the Red Sox and Yankees. Boston leads the season series 8 to 5. The Red Sox have hit 24 home runs. In those 13 games against New York, most against any Red Sox opponent, a breaking ball outside. Matter of fact, the Red Sox have hit three or more homers in a game against the Yankees five times this year. They've doubled up the Yankees head to head in home runs, and that's against the team, New York, that leads the American League in home runs with 217. And the hit by pitch number, interesting, Jerry high certainly when you've played 13 games against each other and still lingering feelings from the last go round smoked down the left field line but hooking it is a home run line shot just fair into the seats and left and the Yankees are protesting just about every Yankee on the field charging after third base umpire Tim Timmons who may get help and change the call the entire umpiring crew is racing over to third base and given how quickly Timmons was willing to get help, if you're a Red Sox fan, you can't like this conversation. They're going to call it a foul ball. Bruce Fredding, the crew chief, who is out at second base, indicating that they changed the call. And from our vantage point, it did appear to be a foul ball. Yeah, I was very surprised, Sean, when they did call that fair. It's clearly a foul ball as you see the ball fully as it goes by that foul ball. If you lose sight of it from that first angle, that means it is a fair ball. But right there, you can see it's clearly a foul ball and uh, no argument really from the Red Sox. Francona, Francona is out there right now discussing it, but immediately every Yankee sprinted toward the third base umpire, and right away the third base umpire called all the umpires together to, to get it right. And they did get it right. Yeah, there's the best angle of it. Clearly a foul ball. Missed the pole by inches. And you have to think Tim Timmons knew immediately that he picked the call because it wasn't just the third baseman Rodriguez and the pitcher Hernandez but just about every Yankee on the field went charging toward him and his fellow umpires were on their way over there very quickly as well. Yeah, to his credit he went right to the home plate umpire and the home plate umpire certainly had a better view of it than any other umpire in the field. Well that didn't take long. <laughs> I want to get you warmed up, Sean. Well, we need to get into the series and a little controversy here in the top of the first to get everybody in the proper frame of mind. The foul ball now, two and two on Manny. You think the umpire, when he saw about uh, five people in pinstripes chasing, that he might have got it wrong? He had a clue. He was wrong. And to his credit, even though it went against the Red Sox, he saw it help. A lot of times they're convinced they're right. They shun the help. He had no choice in this instance. His teammates were going to give him help whether he wanted or not. The way they went over there. Outside a full count. This crowd into it early. Many of them on their feet. Hoping that El Duque could dispatch Manny with a strikeout. David Ortiz. 
Ortiz on deck. Bellhorn is running and the pitch is outside. So a single and a walk and the Red Sox have two men on. With one out here in the first. 3-2 count. El Duque tries that sidearm breaking ball. Big sweeping breaking ball. And I'll tell you, between these two pitches tonight, El Duque and, of course, Bronson Arroyo, you're going to see a lot of pitches like this. Manny holds off the ball, not close to being a strike. David Ortiz at 298, 37 homers, 125 runs batted in. Chance for the Red Sox to grab the lead here in the first. Ortiz now second in the league in runs batted in, one behind Miguel Tejada of Baltimore. He's second in homers, four behind Manny. And he has good numbers against El Duque in a limited sampling. Just five career at bats for Ortiz. Against Hernandez. Outfield plays him to pull the center fielder loft in a couple of steps toward right center. Outside corner and a strike one and one. Hernandez tonight, the right hander John Lieber tomorrow afternoon against Derek Lowe. Pedro Martinez and Mike Messina on Sunday. The weather could change the time of the games around. Line and a right, a base hit. And stopped at third by Dale Swain as Bellhorn. And that was a good idea. As Bellhorn had to linger before taking off to see if that ball would fall in. Sheffield has a decent arm. And with only one out, Dale Swain did not take the chance, and the bases are loaded with one out. Gary Sheffield with 11 assists out there in a very shallow right field here at Yankee Stadium, and I agree, Sean. I think that was the exact correct call by Dale Swain to hold up Mark Bellhorn. Breaking ball there that Ortiz lines for the base hit. Sheffield again charging the ball well, and a very, very strong throw. The throw is a little bit off target. But still, you had to hold that runner at third base. Ball cut off by John Olerud. So now Trot Nixon, who's had some memorable hits against the Yankees. A chance to add to that list. Hitting 288, four homers, 15 runs batted in for Nixon in just 36 games this year. It's it right back to the mound. Hernandez to the plate. And that's all they get. Fortunate for the Red Sox. The throw handcuffed Posada, who fell back on his backside. And you also wonder if El Duque might have been better going to second for what would have been an easy 1 6 3 double play. Well, this should have been an easy 1 2 3 double play, but for some reason, Posada. I don't know if he lost balance or the ball was too low for him, but he just fell backwards after taking that throw from El Duque. I mean, they should be out of the inning. Yeah, that should have been a very easy one, two, three double play. But Posada fell down. Now I'm wondering, uh, watching that again, if Posada maybe caught a cleat somewhere and just lost balance behind home plate. As a lot of times the catcher will get out and stretch like a first baseman to take that throw from the pitcher and then get pounce in a fair territory to make that throw to first. He never did get into that position. One hop to El Duque and yeah it looks he like slipped. he did. He did. He slipped. And when he stepped on the plate to try to get out in front of the plate and get in that position that you described Jerry he slipped on the plate. Now Veritek who was booed lustily during the introduction as he Gave Alex Rodriguez a face full of catcher's mitt in that series at Fenway in late July. Helped touch off the bench clearing brawl. Ball one on Jason, hitting 304 with 17 homers. Swing and a miss and an off speed breaking pitch. Well, there'll be a lot of villains here this weekend for the Red Sox, but certainly Veritek will be the main target. Jason has never hit a grand slam in the major leagues. 
Wouldn't this be a great time? Outside. Two balls and a strike. Jason's been one of the Red Sox best hitters during this second half run that has them back on the heels of the Yankees. He's at 381 over his last 35 games. Batting with Ramirez at third. Ortiz at second and Nixon at first. And two outs in the top of the first. Now Duque a notoriously slow worker that could be a factor tonight with the threat of rain and heavy rain a bit later on. Veritek a pop up over into the seats. The latest report we heard from the Yankees is that they think rain will arrive somewhere around 10 or 11 o'clock tonight, so that should be late enough to get the ball game in. Apparently, once the rain comes, it may be here and heavy for a while, leaving tomorrow's game in jeopardy. But don't worry about that tomorrow. Right now, it's Baratek in a big spot with the Red Sox trying to make an early statement. The 2-2 two -two for Hernandez. He's struck him out with a fastball. Red Sox leave him loaded. After a half inning, the Red Sox nothing in the Yankees coming up. A near miss for Ramirez. As the Red Sox just missed. Having a two-run homer. No score. The Red Sox with a great chance. They left the bases loaded in the top of the first. Now the Yankees come to bat. Their lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Joe Torrey's club has played well lately. They've won four of their last five. Derek Jeter leading off at shortstop. Alex Rodriguez batting second. Gary Sheffield, the right fielder, hitting third. Hideki Matsui in left. Jorge Posada, the catcher. Jason Giambi on the comeback trail is the DH. Then John Olderud at first. Miguel Cairo at second. And Kenny Lofton, the center fielder. Batting ninth against Bronson Arroyo. Arroyo on a two-game winning streak. Those wins coming against Oakland and Seattle in his last two outings. This will be his fourth start of the year against the Yankees. No record in 18 innings has given up 12 run runs. And, of course, he's the guy that hit A-Rod, and that ticked everything off at the Fenway Park in that ball game uh, earlier this season. On July 24th, he has not faced them since. And Jeter pops his first pitch up in shallow left center for Cabrera. Orlando on the outfield grass. One out. Here's the rest of the Red Sox defense. Manny Ramirez in left. Johnny Damon in center. Trod Nixon in right. Kevin Euclid, Cabrera, Mark Bellhorn, and Kevin Millar in the infield. And Jason Veritek behind the plate. The Royals won his last four decisions. The Red Sox have won his last five starts. He has a no decision personally in that five game stretch. Alex Rodriguez batting second now. Takes a breaking ball for a strike. The numbers look good. And here in New York, the feeling is that A Rod really has not been that big a factor in this Yankee season. He has the 33 homers, over 100 runs batted in, almost. He'll have over 100 in all likelihood when the season is over, 94 now. But I think the fact that he's batting second gives you an indication of. The way he's regarded as an offensive force or lack thereof this year. Well, when I look at this lineup that Joe Torre has adjusted over the last couple of weeks, uh, to me it makes a lot of sense. And the reason for that, Sean, is they've got their best four hitters up at the top of the lineup. Jeta, A-Rod, Sheffield, Matsui. Now, some of the guys below that have not had very good seasons at all. So they want to get those guys as many at-bats as possible at the top of that order. And see, it could be the difference between getting four or five at-bats per game. You got guys like Giambi who struggled all year down the bottom. You've got Olerud down there, Cairo, Lofton. Royal said he wouldn't pitch any differently to A Rod than he had in the past. Well, he did in, in this in, in one pitch in this at bat already. Veritek wanted a fastball inside, and a Royal missed outside by about a foot. He said about three quarters of the time he would pitch A Rod away and then. 25% of the time or so come inside. Breaking ball fouled away. 
one of the reasons these Yankee fans really haven't taken the A Rod. He hasn't done much in their big games, the games against the Red Sox. Their interleague play rivalry with the Mets, he did very little against them. And he has struggled all year with runners in scoring position. Hasn't really delivered the clutch hits. A lot of those runs batted in, a product of the home runs. And another pop up right near the mound, the entire infield converging, and Cabrera takes charge, two outs. Well, two outs and two breaking balls by Bronson Arroyo. That slider or the big sweeping curve ball to get Jeter, and the same thing to A Rod. But right handed hit is hope from uh, Arroyo that he leaves that breaking ball middle in and if he does then that's when he gets in trouble when he keeps it away from right handers he has tremendous success. Now Gary Sheffield here in New York they think he's an MVP candidate and those numbers the reason why 298 34 homers 113 runs batted in he pops one up behind the plate and it's on the screen. Sheffield very uh, vocal uh, just about three or four days ago about this series coming up saying we're not uh, going to take anything from those guys uh, you know maybe rounding up the troops for what he knows is going to be a big weekend here in New York clearly upset earlier this season when Pedro Martinez uh, drilled him with a pitch he's had a terrific first season here with the Yankees an all-star the eighth time in his career he's been an all-star Pitch down and away. He certainly is a legitimate MVP candidate. He's been doing it with a bad shoulder and a sore thumb through a lot of the year. And another pop up. It'll be a one, two, three inning for Arroyo and three pop ups. Bellhorn has that one. After one in New York, no score. No score as we go to the third. Two perfect innings from Bronson Arroyo. Certainly doesn't seem affected by the magnitude and hype of this series. Must not be superstitious either, Jerry. A lot of times when guys are rolling along as he has been now for several weeks, they don't do anything different. And he went to that dramatically different Bo Derek esque hair style. <laughs> Very dramatic. <laughs> they won last time out with that hair, so I guess uh, he continues on here tonight. He beat Seattle with that haircut. I don't know if you call it a haircut. What do you call it? I don't know. It's really not a cut more than it's uh, something. Corn rolls, we're told, from the truck. You know, you and I really don't know much about different hair terminology. Of course, you have had that very good system from Mr. Sperling for years now, and I haven't had hair since who knows when. Probably high school. But it does remind me of Bo Derek Bronson's hairdo. I can just see him running along the beach now. <laughs> I don't think he'd look anywhere near as good as uh, Bo did back in her day. Three and one the count on Johnny Damon. Hernandez got the Red Sox to leave the bases loaded in the first and into one two three second with two strikeouts. He's retired five in a row three of them via the K. Damon hits one high and deep to right and when it lands the Red Sox will have a one nothing lead and it landed in the upper deck. Johnny Damon with a shot off El Duque. Damon 17th homer of the year and 78th run batted in out of the leadoff position and the Red Sox lead one to nothing. Now this ball stays up in the zone and Johnny Damon just jumps all over it. Now Damon usually a low ball hitter but that ball just above the belt the fastball and that goes up in the third deck here at Yankee Stadium. Now Duque knows right away that it's a one nothing ball game. Yeah that call is not going to be overturned. That one was fair with plenty to spare and straight away right. Bellhorn took a breaking ball low. What a season Johnny Damon has had. He gets on base every night. That's 26 straight games in which Johnny has reached base safely. He has now scored in 23 of his last 27 games. What more can you ask a leadoff man to do? And the good news is during that streak prior to tonight when he had scored in 22 of the last 26 games the Red Sox had won 
All 22 of those games that Johnny scored a run. Bellhorn down the line. Near the pole. That ball is foul. Well, the Red Sox have hit one home run tonight. And they've come within inches of the left field foul pole and a couple of feet it seemed to the right field foul pole on that fly ball by Bellhorn. Yeah that's Bellhorn there just getting out in front of that big slow breaking ball from El Duque and just pulling it foul. You've had uh, you could very close to having three home runs in this game. Of course Manny Ramirez early in the ball game the first inning just missing the foul pole the home run by Damon and then Bellhorn just missing. And Bellhorn tied up by that one. Popped it foul straight back at us. Mark singled in a right. And was forced out at the plate. On the comebacker to the mound with the bases loaded. One nothing Red Sox in the third on a Damon Homer. Again, Jerry, the early lead could be important here tonight. No guarantee with the threat of heavy rain coming later on that the game will go the full nine. If you have the lead in the sixth or seventh inning, that could become very important. I would think managers for both sides would be playing this one early, uh, like it's you know the last final three innings of a ball game, just in case. Joe Torre has to know as he sits in that Yankee dugout that he's not have the same team that he has had here over the years. That pitching staff just can't match up with some of the others the Yankees have had. Strike three on the outside corner. Fourth strikeout for Hernandez. And Bellhorn strikes out for the 152nd time this year to add to his league leading total. Well after staying inside for most of that battle Duque goes back outside and freezes Mark Bellhorn. Perfect pitch. Right on the outside corner for strike three. One out. Here's Manny who walked in the first. The only walk given up by El Duque so far. The Red Sox this season have been using the Yankees greatest weapon against them the home run ball that's 25 homers now for the Red Sox. Six of them belong to Manny against the Yankees that was a breaking ball. They went up over the head of Ramirez the crowd likes it but certainly no intent to be trying to drill somebody it's not with a looping breaking ball. No that's that extra slow breaking ball that he likes to throw and it just slipped out of his hand. Now the reason the Red Sox have uh, the more home runs in New York even though New York leads the American League in home runs because the Red Sox pitching has been much better against the Yankees. Mm -hmm. We mentioned Kevin Brown out with a broken left hand. And he punched the clubhouse wall notoriously temperamental. And the Yankees understandably very upset about it. Brian Cashman said today they're still trying to determine whether or not they're going to seek some sort of relief from Brown's enormous salary dock him pay since he's out of action for an injury that was ridiculous and not suffered within the performance of his baseball duties. If that was supposed to be the Ephus pitch he doesn't have very good control of it at least so far tonight. You know I, I thought maybe the first one he threw the man he was supposed to be that that ball there he just held on to too long that was going to be the normal breaking ball from El Duque but not even close. Now Posada out for a uh, extended chat with his starting pitcher. So right now in their starting rotation they have El Duque John Lieber and Mike Messina who as Jerry mentioned earlier has pitched very well lately and Javier Vasquez who's been up and down lately but because of the injury to Brown instead of having Brown every fifth day they're looking at starts from Esteban Loiza, who's been terrible, or Brad Halsey, or Tanyan Sturts. They're all a far cry from Kevin Brown. The rain has started up again. The umbrella's popping up. Fans well prepared. They are certainly well aware of the ominous forecast. This morning, the local New York weather casters were predicting two to four inches of rain today. This is the first rain we've seen all day. 
For scores, interviews, highlights, and more, tune into Nesson Sports Test. It's a fast paced 15 minutes of what you need to get your morning sports fix. Nesson Sports Test, morning starting at 5. Boston in the third. Ramirez at first with one out. Red Sox have grabbed the lead on the home run by Damon to open this inning. Here's David Ortiz. Who looped a single into right in the first inning. Strike one at the belt. Apparently, George Steinbrenner is still upset that. When David Ortiz was out there and available, the Yankees didn't get him. The Red Sox did. Not like George to let things linger like that. Let it go. Now, you know, through the years, he's got an awful lot of guys. You know, I'd get over it if I was him. He's signed some pretty good players yes, he here throughout the years. You wouldn't say much about that either before Ortiz started having these very good years for the Red Sox. That's Brian Cashman, the general manager. Usually around here, when moves don't work out, he gets the blame. When they work out, George takes the credit. Bill two pitch way outside. Yeah, around here they call it the Florida operation. You know, George and his group from down in Florida, I guess. Uh, a lot of different factions are here working with the Yankees. Raining quite a bit harder now. We were told there was a chance of some showers between now and 10 or 11 o'clock. Uh, and unfortunately, they're going to stop. And this could be bad. Bruce Fremming calling for the tarp, and he knows the weather forecast. If they stop, it looks like the players can't believe it, Sean. Yeah, they're. Well, actually, he's just summoning the ground crew chief right now. Maybe he wants to know, has anybody looked at the radar? Is this just going to be a couple of minutes and we'll play through it? Or does it look like this is going to be here for a while? The players didn't want to come in. And now Bruce Fremming is going to confer with the rest of the umpiring crew. Well, good. If they take long enough, maybe the field will be turned all to mud. They're going to wave the players off the field and cover it. So we have a rain delay at 7:57. Now let's hope it's just a delay because one of the reports we heard earlier was if it started raining, it might not stop for 15 or 16 hours. So the tarp coming out. The Red Sox and Yankees in the third inning. Boston leading one to nothing on the home run by Damon. One and two the count on David Ortiz with one out and Manny Ramirez at first. If they resume, that will be the situation. We'll take a break, come back with more right after this. Friday Night Baseball on UPN 38 is brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. Did you know? Game twice delayed by rain. Red Sox leading one to nothing on a Johnny Damon homer off El Duque Orlando Hernandez. He will not come back after the lengthy rain delay. It's Tanyan Sturtz. Tanyan Sturtz making his 23rd appearance. He has made three starts. One of those was that game that uh, he started at Boston before being ejected from that game and that brawl. So now we have the two pitchers who were the starters in that game in the game now. Arroyo and Sturtz who went head to head. On the 24th of July, of course, Sturts got tangled up during the brawl with Gabe Kapler. Sturts was bloodied in that affair. Do you expect any reprisals at all this weekend? Do you think any of that lingers? Uh, well, I mean, it could. There's no question it could. I think whatever the game dictates, but I don't think anything's, you know, if something starts up in this series again, sure, it could happen again. But these games are too important to be going out there and uh, doing something foolish. A Rod did not go to first. Mouth in the direction of Arroyo. Veritek intervened. Stuck a mitt in the face of A Rod, and the battle had been joined. Sturts was bloody. Suspensions on both sides, and that's the other part of it, Jerry. This late in the year, with the races as tight as they are, particularly in the East, neither team really wants to risk losing 
a key player to suspensions. Very late rain has started up again. Now the other thing too, Sean, you know, you don't know how Sturts feels. I mean, it was Capital that was involved. Dixon and Ortiz all with Sturts over there in that one big pile. Strike three call. The crowd thought Verzek was out on the previous pitch. Did not get the call. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, after these two rain delays, this has been a very, very big strike zone. Buenos that behind home plate and in knowing the forecast if you're a hitter you've got to know right now that this umpire zone is going to get a little bit bigger so anything close you've got to be swinging I think that's a strike really well, that one breaking ball that Arroyo was lucky to get away with and there was another one earlier in the count that Gita didn't like Millar pulls one sharply foul Kevin struck out swinging against Hernandez in the second El Duque pitched three innings Allowed one run, it was earned on the Johnny Damon Homer, one of the three Red Sox hits. He walked two, both went to Manny Ramirez. He struck out five. He threw 68 pitches, 37 strikes. Damon's home run, the only run in the ball game. Into the upper deck, leading off the third, the upper deck and right. A little low. Two balls and a strike. With Orlando Cabrera on deck. Six for 18 lifetime with a dinger against Sturtz. Fastball in the corner, two and two. Well, they tell us that one thing Tanya and Sturtz has been working on is a cut fastball that has helped him a little bit in these appearances out of the bullpen. He worked with Rivera on that. He's been a candidate to start games and has started for a while this year when they've had injuries. Up and in, a full count. Thirds from Worcester. Out of St. Peter Marion High School. He graduated in 1988. 33 year old right hander. And a pop up. Up into some light raindrops. Olaru the catch. Know the score before the game with Nesson's new one hour pregame show. Olympia Sports presents the Boston Globe pregame report featuring commentary, news, pregame matchups, and analysis. Now, one hour before game time on Nesson. Orlando Cabrera grounded out his first time up. Takes a strike at the belt. Just outside. Grounded foul past Dale Swain. One and two, and those hardy souls who remain, the Yankee fans, trying to spur Sturts onto a one, two, three inning. Center right at Lofton. A couple of steps back. It's a 1 2 3 inning. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 1 0. The Red Sox. Sean McDonough, Jerry Remy, Dan Roach back at Yankee Stadium. 1 0. Boston. Bottom of the fourth. Alex Rodriguez, Gary Sheffield, and Hideki Matsui. The two, three, and four hitters do up for the Yankees. Bronson Arroyo has allowed just one base runner. He hit Miguel Cairo with a pitch last inning. Pulled the string on A Rod, who was ahead of it. He popped to short in the first. Center Nixon on the run. He can't get it. It's a one hopper off the fence. And it'll be a double for Alex Rodriguez. Now the first time up, Bayron tried to pull the ball on breaking ball from Arroyo. That time he gets the fastball and he shoots it in that gap in right center field. Much better approach uh, this at bat for A-Rod, not trying to pull the ball, and he finds that uh, leadoff double. First hit for New York, 24th double of the season for Alex Rodriguez. 
That has to feel good after what happened with Ian Arroyo and Veritek. Back on July 24th. Now the time running scoring position with nobody out for Gary Sheffield. And the crowd to life for one of the few times tonight. Sheffield popped the second, ending the first inning. Of course, to be an official game. It has to go four and a half innings if the home team has the lead, five full if the home team is trailing. We're at the bottom of the fourth right now. Two and oh, the count. A Rod not able to get much of a lead. Bellhorn very close to the second base bag. Grounded up the middle and almost hit Rodriguez. He had to hold up to avoid the ball, so he will not score. He goes to third. Back-to-back -back hits for New York. And they have two men on. Runners at the corners and nobody out. That was not good base running at all by A-Rod because uh, he has to know where the shortstop is. This ball is directly at him, and Cabrera is not even in the pitcher. I have no idea why he's jumping over the baseball. He should have been heading the third base right on contact, and he'd have had a chance to score. You've got to know where that shortstop's playing. Rodriguez at third, Sheffield at first. And the batter at Deki Matsui, he grounded to first. To Millar made a nice backhanded play on a ball in the hole and threw onto a royal covering for the out. In the air, but a pop up. Not deep enough to score the run. Nixon the catch. One out. A Rod bluff, but no chance. That ball was not very far out onto the outfield grass. Now Matsui with a chance to drive in a run. A man on third and nobody out. Gets that little pop up and uh, just sort of slams the bat to the ground. I think Frank Cohen is going to really have to keep his eye on Arroyo. You know, any sign of trouble at all, early trouble, because of the long layover, you've got to have somebody ready to go. Now Terry Francona would love a double play ball, and they have a great candidate to do it. With Posada up there, he leads the league and double plays grounded into with 23. He fly to right his first time up tonight in the second inning. He's grounded at 23. Paul Canerco and Miguel Tejada, along with Tory Hunter of Minnesota, tied for second with 21 double play ground balls. Breaking ball and a strike. 1 0 Boston, fourth inning. A game twice delayed by rain, a total of an hour and 25 minutes. And a threat of more rain to come. So the lead, even here in the fourth inning, could be very important. Breaking ball, a strike going to. Posada didn't like it. Yeah, a lot of complaints from Yankee hitters uh, since the rain delay. Posada complaining about this pitch, but I'll tell you, it looks like a good one. I mean, it's not too high, and it certainly looked like it got the outside corner. Yeah, hard to know what he thought was wrong with it. Posada with Giambi on deck. He did not look good while striking out in his first at bat. The 0-2 pitch, high fastball, grounded down to first, backhand stop. Millar flips to first for the out, but a run scores. Really nothing else Millar could do. Rodriguez scores to tie the game, and Sheffield moves into scoring position. And Posada picks up an RBI, his 68th of the year. Uh, just by knocking the ball down, at least he's able to get it out. Looked like that ball was going to go between first and second for a base hit. Knocks it down, is able to get the out at first base, but that does bring home the tying run for the Yankees. And now the go-ahead run in scoring position. Jason Giambi, as you can see, the Red Sox with a shift on. Cabrera almost behind the second base bag, and Bellhorn, the second baseman, playing in shallow right field. Giambi struck out swinging, ending the second inning. And they're taking it day to day with Giambi. They're hoping that he can revert back to his form of yesteryear, that they'll catch lightning in a bottle, and he could give them another major weapon in the playoffs. 
Due to all the injuries and illness, he's been nowhere near the usual Jason Giambi this year. He didn't like that call either, one and one. A lot of people around here were stunned today when Giambi was in the lineup tonight and Bernie Williams not in the lineup. He really is essentially still in a rehab situation. Brian Cashman said today that if they had a minor league team still playing, he'd still be on a rehab. Essentially, he's rehabbing a pennant race here. Two balls and a strike as the fastball missed inside. 1-1 one, one score. The hits are 3-2 to two for the Red Sox. Both Yankee hits in this inning. A double by Rodriguez. A single by Sheffield. And after a fly out by Matsui, a Posada grounder brought in Rodriguez from third and moved Sheffield along to second. Should Giambi reach, John Olderud would hit next. Way inside, 3-1. That's how you try to pitch Giambi. You try to pitch him in above the belt and tie him up. Don't want him to extend his arms. They try to get that cut fastball inside. It's too far inside. Broken bad roller. Bellhorn comes in from deep second base. Actually shallow right to throw him out. The Yankees get one to tie. After four, tied at one. To the bottom of the fifth in a 1-1 game. Bronson Arroyo will face the bottom third of the Yankee order. John Olderud, Miguel Cairo, and Kenny Lofton. One run, three hits for Boston. One run, two hits for New York. Both hits last inning for the Yankees as they tied it. After Johnny Damon homered for Boston in the third. Olerud struck out swinging. He took strike one this time around from Arroyo. And the ball down and in. Red Sox closest pursuers in the wild card race Anaheim just getting started at home now with Texas. And they are scoreless in the first inning Red Sox five and a half ahead all the road to deep right and gone way back into the right field bleachers. Having a miserable season in Seattle, and they cut him loose. The Yankees picked him up with Giambi out, and he's been excellent. Great defensively, and more than they could have hoped for with the bat. That's his third home run for New York and 21st RBI. Yeah, they try to sneak the fastball by Olerud inside, and John Olerud would have none of that as he puts that in that bleacher area. Eight overall in a season, as Sean mentioned, his third as a member of the New York Yankees. And now a butt and a good one by Cairo and a rolls foul. Lucas did the only thing he could do, let it go. Now here at Yankee Stadium, that grass goes right up to the white line, the foul line, and most of the time, when a ball is on that area, it stays in fair territory. And if it didn't get over to the very edge of that grass, it would have stayed fair, but it did get to the edge, which kicked it foul. Cairo hit his first time up in the backside. Foul tip for strike two, 0 and 2. So they get through this inning with the lead. It's an official game. I just looked over in the Yankee TV booth. They have the radar over there, and I looked at Paul O'Neill, and he gestured that there's no sign of any rain in the immediate vicinity, which is good news now for Red Sox fans. Cairo spins one back here. The Olerud home run adds to the Yankees' league leading total. They're 218th of the season. Cairo sends one pretty well hit down the left field line. Manny near the pole, and it is caught by Ramirez. Ripping it away from the fans. Cairo still running the bases, thinking he has a home run. But Manny caught it. Cairo went all the way around the bases. I'm not sure he realizes. He doesn't. Now he just found out from Lofton in the on-deck circle. No, sorry, Miguel. 
It was caught. <laughs> yeah, out. You're out, Miguel. Manny going deep in that corner, leaps, and it, wow. the, uh, he really got high off the ground there. No fan in the fan with that, and it gave Manny a chance to make the play. The fan backs off, and that gives Ramirez a chance to make the play. And then somebody threw something at Ramirez out in the left, at, right after that catch as Manny was walking back to his position. Somebody fired a bottle or something out at Ramirez, and he just picked it up and threw it aside. That might have been what Francona was talking about with the home plate umpire Wendelster. What a catch. You saw Manny way up in the air, glove up over the wall. And the Red Sox were fortunate, Jerry, that those fans didn't interfere more than they did because it was Manny reaching into the stands. That probably would not have been a fan interference call. And one of them got in the mid on it. Oh, that's absolutely right. That's free game. When that ball's over the fence like that, there was one fan that looks like he reached out to try to catch it, but uh, it looked like after that everybody backed off. And at the very end of this replay, you see the bottle bouncing on the field. A water bottle. That's an expensive toss. What are those waters here at Yankee Stadium? Uh, 25 dollars <laughs> told it was a plastic beer bottle. Waters are $8? Oh, the beer is $8. Lofton grounds one foul. What the catch. By Ramirez for his occasional lapses, Jerry, and it seems to be this season more than others. He's made some tremendous plays this year. Uh, to me, that's the best play he's made all season. But you're right, I agree with you, Sean. You know, he'll have that lapse every now and then, but uh, overall, he has made some very good plays. Lofton slaps it in the hole, knocked down by Cabrera. He didn't really feel it cleanly, unlikely to get Lofton, who still runs well in his mid 30s. It is a hit. I would very much like to see somebody up right now because you know remember now I, I didn't I had no complaint of Arroyo coming back but right now the Yankees are starting to put something together again I mean he's had all that time off yeah they got the homer to start the inning within inches of another homer by Cairo robbed by Ramirez and now the solid hit by Lofton on a hard hit chopper. Here's Derek Jeter. The top of the order. He has popped the short and struck out. Red Sox infield at double play depth. The outfield a little bit around toward right. And Lofton a threat to run it first. Arroyo, when he works in the windup, has that high leg kick, does shorten his delivery. He's very tough to get a jump on. Yep. Interesting, he'd be so comfortable with that. Abbreviated delivery out of the stretch when his ordinary windup is so long. And he doesn't seem to lose much velocity on his fastball uh, with the change. Seven stolen bases for Lofton, three times caught stealing. Two to one, New York. They lead for the first time tonight. In the fifth, Jeter with A Rod on deck. Torrey could put the hit and run play on, try to keep pressure here on uh, Bronson Arroyo. Up slowly down the line, a fair ball. Euclid has to go to first. For the out. Lofted in scoring position with two down. Here's Alex Rodriguez. He doubled leading off last inning, hit a gapper in right center. The first hit given up by Arroyo, and he scored their first run. After Sheffield singled in the third, he scored on a ground out by Jorge Posada. The Yankees have been coming from behind all year. They lead the major leagues and come from behind wins. Certainly a long way to go before this one's in the win column. But they have 57 victories when coming from behind. That is one shy of the major league record. A 58 set by the 1977 Philadelphia Phillies. They've already set the American League record, which is 53 come from behind wins by the Brewers in 1987. And they've been 
in the situation, Jerry, where they've had to come from behind a lot because of their shaky starting pitching. Yeah, exactly right. Their bullpen's been good for them for the most part of the season. Uh, Gordon, Quantrill, Rivera, but starting pitching has not been good. They've fallen behind in a lot of games, but they've got a tremendous offense. They're able to battle back, and they, and they hope that the, you know, they get that lead and get to that bullpen, which has really been used a lot. Matter of fact, both these clubs have used their bullpen a lot. Yep. Of course, the feeling, certainly in Red Sox Nation and around baseball, is the Yankees are vulnerable. And yet, you look at the record, and they're sitting there with the best record in the American League. And the second best record in all of Major League Baseball. 92 and 54. They're the best record in the majors here at home. They're 50 and 21 at the stadium. Now the only reason I feel they're more vulnerable than they have been in years past is because uh, you don't have Clemens, you don't have Pettit, you know, you really haven't had anybody on this staff, with the exception of El Duque, who's taken off. Now, yep. it, uh, you know, is Messina capable of coming back? Uh, absolutely. Brown might not be. Apparently, that pain in his hand is still considerable. Vasquez been a little bit up and down lately. I heard Brian Cashman the general manager of the Yankees on a radio show on WFAN here the big all sports radio station with Mike and the Mad Dog and the Mad Dog took him to task so with 194 million dollar payroll isn't it your job as the general manager to make sure you have a better pitching staff but his answer was well we do have the best record in the American League and the second best record in baseball we have 92 wins. They were also wondering about the lack of a left handed starter of course throughout their history when the Yankees have had all this success but almost always had terrific left handed starting pitching in recent years Pettit and Wells and Brian Cashman made the point well this winter when they were looking for pitching help the lefties who were available were guys you would want the Brian Anderson's of the world so the better pitchers who were available like Vasquez or Brown were right handed they inquired obviously about Schilling. And he also was asked about Andy Pettit. Well, he could have kept the lefty and Andy Pettit. And Brian Cashman maintains they offered Andy Pettit more money than did the Houston Astros, but he just wanted to go to Houston, back to his hometown. Well, the, other, the other question is, when did they offer him that money? I mean, you know, he could have been wrapped up a lot earlier than let him get out there in the free agent market to go to Houston. Full count on Rodriguez with two outs and lofted at second of the fifth inning. The Yankees have taken the lead on the older road homer. And there's a walk. The first given up by Arroyo. Here comes Dave Wallace. And still no action in the Red Sox bullpen, but maybe the mound visit will buy some time for that to change. And there is some stirring now in a little hut that is a long way from home plate out in left center field. Well, they chat. We'll give you news from around the league. It's brought to you as always by. Stay tuned after the game for New England's Red Sox postgame shows. W.B. Mason's Extra Innings Extra, a complete Red Sox wrap-up, followed by Granite City Electric's Extra Innings Extra. After the last inning, the action's just beginning. Serious punishment handed down by Bob Watson in Major League Baseball. Cisco, of course, was arrested and released on $15,000 bail. Mike Myers has just begun warming up. An ugly incident today. The suspension is handed down for Francisco and the others from the Texas Rangers. Now Sheffield. Lance Channing MVP. Tends to add to his resume. In a big spot here in the fifth. Ball one on Sheffield. Popped a second in the first inning, grounded a single in the center field in the fourth. Blown away. Certainly Arroyo now nowhere near as sharp as he was earlier in the ball game. Tired the first six men he faced, then had to endure the rain delay that kept him off the mound for about an hour and 45 minutes, but came back in the third 
And pitched with relative ease in that inning. Hit a batter, but that was it. He dropped down and got a chopper down to third. And Euclid says, all right, Kenny Lofton, I'll tag you. And that's the inning. But the Yankees lead for the first time tonight on a home run by John Olerud. It's 2-1 to one after 5. John Olerud's home run has put New York on top 2-1 to one as we go to the 6th. It's an official game. Tanyan Sturtz beginning his third inning of relief. He's pitched two hitless, scoreless innings. Walked one last inning. That's the only damage done against Sturtz. Here's Ortiz taking all the way. Strike one. David single to right in the first. Bounced back to the mound. A little number in front of the plate in the third. Two runs, four hits for New York. One run, three hits for Boston. The Red Sox have had just one hit the Damon Homer since the first inning. Same spot, same call, 0 and 2. That looks like that cut fastball I mentioned earlier. A little cut to it, picking up the outside corner. Nixon and Veritek also do here in the sixth. High riding fastball, a ball and two strikes. Texas has scored three times in the first at Anaheim. It's three nothing Rangers. Oakland leads Seattle one to nothing in the second. Up at Safeco Field. Check swing at a ball low. They want the call. They don't get it from Tim Timmons. So from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2 for Ortiz and Sturtz. Nixon next. Ball four. Well, not very good pitching there by Sturtz. Got to hit 0-2 and, and then walk the leadoff man with a one-run lead. The fifth inning was eventful. Manny Ramirez ends the inning on a nice running catch by Sheffield. Red Sox stranded a runner at second base. And then in the Bottom half, all the road homer. Cairo thought he homered, but he was robbed of a catch of a homer on a great catch by Manny Ramirez. Here's Nixon, the go ahead run at the plate. They're not holding Ortiz on as Nixon takes a strike. All the road playing a couple of steps behind him. Second Ortiz. So the Red Sox have the first two men on. And Nixon continues to hit. Nixon goes down for a pitch that's down and away and shoots it to the opposite field. Nice piece of hitting there by Trot Nixon. You're right, Sean. You know, since coming back to the lineup and playing sparingly, he's had some very, very good at bats. You have to think it's a dilemma for Terry Francona. His team's been as hot as anybody in baseball for the last month and a half. The guys have been playing right field, been doing a good job. Nixon likely to be rusty. He hasn't faced major league pitching for such a long period of time. So they tried easing him back in, but he's demonstrating perhaps he's just ready to go. Reclaim his starting spot and go. And of course, the guy that will take the hit if Nixon has continued to to continue to play on a regular basis would be Dave Roberts because it'd probably be a platoon out there between Nixon and Gabe Kapler and Roberts maybe at times coming in defensively. One strike on Veritek. He has fanned twice once against each pitcher and he's in the hole here 0 2. Nine run at second. Go ahead run at first in the sixth inning. Two to one New York. Veritek to be followed by Kevin Millar. Ortiz, the runner at second. Nixon at first. Outfield plays Veritek to pull. Matsui straight away and left. A big gap in left center. He strikes out for the third time. Well, certainly the Yankee Stadium crowd likes that. Jason Veritek, number one villain here this weekend. And 
the third strikeout tonight for him a fastball tailing away from uh, Veritek that ball thrown pretty hard by Tanyan Sturridge. A very late swing by Veritek. Seems to have had a little bit of a slow bat tonight. Now Millar. He has struck out and popped out in foul ground. Check swing. Tapper to Sturridge. He goes to second to one on the first. A double play. One, four, three. Promising start to the inning, but that faded quickly, and the Yankees still lead two to one. Fifty-five thousand one hundred and twenty-eight here tonight at Yankee Stadium. They watch the Yankees take a two to one lead into the eighth inning. Red Sox led one to nothing after Johnny Damon Homer single runs by New York in the fourth and fifth. The homer by Olderwood in the fifth. And it's Tom Gordon to Mark Bellhorn to open the eighth with ball one high. A single and two strikeouts. For Bellhorn tonight, he's facing Gordon for the first time. Gordon came in last inning, retired Damon on a ground out to end the inning. The ball high, 2 0. Oh. Ramirez and Ortiz, the meat of the order coming up. Three decisions in seven appearances. That's a lot of decisions for Gordon. Against the Red Sox this year. He was on the American League All Star team. Second time he was an All Star. He was also picked in 1998. There's a strike. Of course, Gordon throws the fastball. He's got a very good curveball and a slider. Not too many change ups from Tom Gordon. Gordon get through this inning and then go to Rivera in the ninth. Fastball missed. Decided it didn't help their chances of getting the call. The way he failed to get a glove on it. Last time Gordon was an All Star. The other time in '98 he was a member of the Red Sox. He had 46 saves that year to lead the league. And Bellhorn strikes out for the third straight at bat. The Yankee pitchers have fanned 11 Red Sox hitters tonight. And really, what you've got here for the Yankees are almost like two closes now. You know, Tom Gordon obviously with plenty of closing experience and getting and having his arm strength back uh, after some injuries. That looked like the cut fastball that time from Gordon to pick up the strikeout. Then, of course, you got Rivera behind him. Thinking home run against Gordon. He has only allowed four this season. The guy throws so many breaking balls, you'd think he'd hang more. You know, he hasn't thrown a curveball yet, I don't think, in this game. I suppose mostly fastball, that cut fastball, a slider. Way inside, then he got out of the way. Gordon, 36 years old. Native Floridian. Still lives in Florida in Avon Park. This pitch for the Royals, the Red Sox, the Cubs, Houston, the White Sox, and now the Yankees. Time with New York in December as a free agent. The ball down and away to and Owen Ramirez. Not much success for Manny against Tom Gordon. 172 average with six walks. How many uh, pitches in baseball have those kind of numbers against Manny Ramirez? All it takes is that one mistake. Check swing and a tapper down all the road away is going away. Two outs. Stay tuned after the game for New England's Red Sox post game shows. WB Mason's Extra Innings Extra, a complete Red Sox wrap up, followed by Granite City Electric's Extra Innings Extra. After the last inning, the action's just beginning.
Shout out Jerry Remy, Dan Roach, our producer, Russ Ken, director Mike Naraci, our associate producer, Greg Petronzio. Delighted to have you with us for Friday Night Baseball. Red Sox and Yankees in the first of a three game series. Ortiz, a single, bounced back to the mound and walked. Swinging to tie it. Now, just as I mentioned, he hadn't thrown any curveballs. The last pitch to Manny was a curveball. The first pitch to Ortiz was that curveball. Red Sox have had just two hits since the first inning. Limited sampling for Ortiz against Gordon, one for three. A lifetime. I believe Mariano Rivera has just started loosening in their bullpen. Wild swing by David Owen Toon. Looks like again the curveball here from Tom Gordon. That's three in a row. And that one was nasty. Yeah. That started, yes. excuse me, there's uh, Rivera loosening up. But that curveball started belt high, ended up ankle high. To the fastball and Ortiz stays alive. Saw a little shrug by Gordon. I think he thought he had thrown that one by Ortiz, who just did get a little piece of it. Two to one, New York, with two outs. The base is empty in the top of the eighth. Pedro Martinez will pitch the series finale here on Sunday against Mike Messina. Derek Lowe and John Lieber tomorrow. Another 0 2. And another foul ball. And the six games head to head are huge, but would you agree this game tonight is really important? The Red Sox win tonight. Now it's two and a half. They lose, obviously. The Yankees maybe take a little bit of a breath. That lead goes to four and a half, and at this juncture, that's a huge difference. Well, when you look at the rest of the year, you know, I mean, if the Yankees win one of one game in each series, they're in good shape. Fastball just missed. Not one. The one area where the Yankees have a more difficult schedule than the Red Sox is that they have to play Minnesota for a three-game series, and of course, Minnesota is playing. They didn't play well tonight, but they're playing very good baseball. He struck him out a one two three inning for Gordon with two strikeouts. Bottom of the eighth upcoming two to one Yankees. Heading to the bottom of the eighth in New York. Red Sox trying to keep it a one run deficit with an eye toward the ninth when Boston will have Nixon Veritek and Millard do up likely against Mariano Rivera and on the pitch the eighth from Boston is Mike Timlin Timlin making his 69th appearance uh, Timlin last worked Wednesday against Tampa Bay pitched an inning against uh, the Devil Rays 69 hits and 69 and a third 52 strikeouts opponents hitting 258 on the season against Timlin and of course facing three right handers to start this inning off for the Yankees it's the top of the order Jeter Rodriguez and Sheffield do up Alan Embry pitched one inning it was a one two three inning with two strikeouts. Red Sox pitchers Arroyo and Embry have retired the last seven New York hitters. Jeter 0 for 3 is the leadoff man. A little bit of everything for Derek tonight. He has popped out struck out and grounded out. Ominous note for Red Sox fans: the Yankees are 79 and one this year when leading after eight innings. However, comma, we do remember the home run by Bill Miller in the bottom of the ninth off Mariano Rivera on July 24th. That gave the Red Sox the come from behind victory. That is one of only three home runs that Rivera has allowed this season. Red Sox are down nine to four in that ball game, one eleven to ten. 
And ended a streak of 23 consecutive save conversions by Rivera. One of his three blown saves for the year. Pretty good looking pitch. Called the ball one and one. Seven for the year, 31 above 500. That's their season high. Trying tonight to get to 32 over for the first time this year, and for the first time since 1986. Red Sox two wins shy of their third straight 90 win season. Jeter to right, Nixon has room. One out. Here. We can't reverse the curse, but we can rewind the week. Tune in to Granite City Electric's Red Sox Rewind, hosted by Eric Freed. A 30-minute review of Red Sox profiles, interviews, and highlights. After an exciting week, unwind with Rewind. Mondays and Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. only on Nesson. I know two of them. I have Casey Stengel and Dallas Green. How about Yogi Berra? And Yogi Berra. How many did you say there were four? Yeah. So we wanted the other three. Right. So we got it. Right. We got it. So what did we win? Some lovely parting gifts? I think a gift to uh, a cruise or Rem something. <laughs> a Volvo. <laughs> Trip on Southwest Airlines. We got to get something. in the hole and two. He has popped out, doubled and scored and walked. All of his plate appearances were against the starter Arroyo. Had been a uh, pleasantries exchange between uh, A-Rod and uh, Veritek tonight, which you wouldn't expect there to be. Like, how you doing, big guy? You know, stuff like that. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. I can't just let bygones be bygones. Almost got the sense in that thing that uh, Alex Rodriguez was just trying to make a point with his teammates or endear himself in a new situation. I don't know. Well, kind of silly. You got hit by the pitch, walked down to first. Yeah, and, and, and clearly, you know, at least in my view, I mean, the Royal was not throwing at him. No. Because you're a shameless homer, so you would not think that. No, I, I try to call it as it is, Sean, but I didn't think so in that case. So you're going to miss. If I, if I think a guy's throwing to somebody's coconut, I'll let you know. I know that. <laughs> and you have on many occasions. <laughs> but, you know, the act that followed, uh, I, it just didn't make much sense. And, I, you know, and then when he, you know, when he challenged Veritek to come on, well, you know, he's not going to, he's going to go. Sure. Veritek's not going to back down. Plus, the big complaint here in New York is he didn't take his mask off. That's all we read about today. Well, you, really? Excuse me, Mr. A. Rod. Let me take my mask off, and, and you know now we'll what? fight. Since I have a chest protector and shin pads on, you know, let me take those off too, in case you'd like to punch me in the chest. <laughs> we'll resume the fight in about five minutes. Pardon me, Mr. A. Rod. I to get this equipment off. Play like a hockey fight, you know. Yeah. You don't really see that in baseball fights. They don't try to like pull the jersey up over the other guy's head, which is so common in hockey. Tie up their arms. Sheffield a hitter, one ball to count. Two balls to count. He has popped out, singled, and grounded out. Two outs, bottom of the eighth. Two to one, New York. Nixon, Veritek, and Millard do up in the ninth against Mariano Rivera in all likelihood. He is still warming up. Foul tip. It's a strike, two and one. Sheffield pit playing through an awful lot of pain this season. A bad shoulder. He's had a couple of quarter zone shots. He's put off a few, so he's able to stay in the lineup. Apparently, he's been a terrific teammate here, too. You know, he had a reputation earlier in his career when he was with Milwaukee for being a difficult guy, a little bit of a dog. I, think, I know in Atlanta, Bobby Cox really liked him. Yeah. And uh, here in New York, they rave about him.
3 1 pitch. Apparently just outside, ball four. Two off base runner in the eighth for New York. First base runner since the fifth. The middle part of this game, that was a strike. Yeah. It's no longer a strike, and a kind of a smirk on the face of Timlin after not getting that call. I think even Sheffield thought that this had a chance to be called a strike as he was not quick out of the batter's box. So a two out base runner Sheffield at first for Matt Sulio for three tonight. It's hard to come by in this one each team with four strike down the middle. Like when Matsui gets ready to hit, he always looks up at the label of the bat. That tells him that he's got his bat in the proper position. Right there. Does the proper position vary from hitter to hitter, or is it always? In oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, there's certain you know guys use the label different ways how they line it up. And Matsui obviously wants to see the label when he looks up the label facing him. Now you don't want the label to be on the part of the bat that hits the ball. Right, right? exactly. You never hear that. Well, he was a good label hitter. Uh, label hitters don't last very no. long at the major league level. I know it's a tangent, but what is amino vital? What? On the backstop there. Amino vital? Amino vital? Uh, it looks like a purse burn or something. I don't know. Is it? Energize, hydrate, focus, repair. Is that what that says? Maybe it's uh, for your hair. Maybe it grows hair. Like <laughs> Someone said it's the glue that helps keep your system on. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a little spaceship back there. A little rocket booster. I think it's one of those, you know, energy kind of drinks. Let's hope so. Crowd's going to need one tonight. This game past the four-hour mark. They ought to advertise with all the free publicity we're giving them now. UPN 38. I know our crack salespeople, Scott McGavick. They'll have a bill for advertising on the way to Amino Vital. Good sinking movement on that pitch. Three and two. Sheffield will be running with the payoff pitch. Yeah, Matt, so he's not had real good swings in this game tonight. Usually uh, Arroyo, he handles very well. Had some uncomfortable swings to get him. Chases a bad pitch there on a 3 1 count. With Posada do next. If Matsui could reach. That's him. There goes Sheffield and he strikes out. He still is not having good swings. Excellent pitching tonight for the Red Sox, but they need at least one run to reward the effort by the Moundsman. Back in New York and heading to the ninth inning, the Red Sox need at least one run to extend the proceedings in this critical game, one of a three-game series, trailing two to one, and they'll have to do it against one of the best closers of all time, Mariano Rivera. There are the numbers for Rivera, but the save numbers, the league leading 49 in 52 opportunities this season. Opponents hitting 220 off Rivera. Leads the majors with the 49 saves, 332 career saves. Eighth all time, most ever in the American League. The Brooke Dennis Eckersley American League career save mark. And comfortably the leader in the AL this year. Rod Nixon, then Jason Veritek, and Kevin Millar. It was one of those blown saves against the Red Sox when Bill Miller homered to beat him. At Fenway on July 24th, the home run we showed you moments ago. The other two blown saves were back to back. The all 
all-time Yankee leader in games appeared in. Tonight appearance number 581. Now this guy will certainly go down as uh, one of the all-time great Yankees. What he's meant to this organization. His five of the seven highest single-season save totals. He's seen a lot of action this series against the Red Sox because a lot of the game's been close. As is this one. Ooh. Nixon fortunate to get that call. Once again, almost every pitch from Rivera, the cut fastball. And it looked like this, this cut fastball had the inside corner, but maybe a little low. Only well, had the strike zone expand for a while. Looks like it has shrunk for both sides. Swing and a miss. They went up and away. Two two from Rivera chop foul wide of first. Two two and a ball up and away. Red Sox need a base runner to get the tying run on base and get the go-ahead run up to the plate. And there's Veritek. He's had a rough night with three strikeouts. But all of that could be forgotten very quickly with one swing of the bat. The payoff pitch upstairs. High and away for ball four. That well, wasn't the uh, typical sharp Rivera we've seen in the past. That'll bring a pinch runner out for the Red Sox. Dave Roberts will run at first base for Trot Nixon. Would you look for him to try to steal? It's quite it's possible but uh, you know Rivera does take quite a while to get rid of the ball but I I, I kind of doubt it. I think they'll uh, be letting these guys who have a chance at a home run swing the bat. That ends a string of eight men in a row retired by the Yankees pitching staff. Sturge retired the last four he faced Gordon retired all four men he faced and struck out to one third an inning and a third for Gordon with two strikeouts. Now Veritek four hits in his career and 15 at bats. A rod in on the grass at third. Veritek 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. One against Hernandez, two against Sturts. Looked like the Yankees thought he might bunt. No sign of it there. A rod has taken a couple of steps back to even with the bag at third. Mariano Rivera, the 34 year old from Panama. We'll check on Roberts. Davis stolen one base for the Red Sox and been caught once in 32 games after he swiped 33 for the Dodgers and was thrown out only once in 68 games in the National League this year. thing about these two closes for the Red Sox and the Yankees Rivera folk they're both guys capable of giving more than one inning We've seen it many many times from Rivera we've also seen it from folk Keith warming up in the bullpen hoping the Red Sox can extend it tie it or take the lead tying run at first go ahead run at the plate Veritek in an 0 and 2 hole Roberts runs at strike three and no throw from Posada 
Well, Veritek fans for the fourth time, but the Red Sox do have the tying run in scoring position now as Roberts has his second stolen base in a Red Sox uniform. And a very easy steal. Uh, this Veritek chasing that high cutter, but a great jump at first base. We mentioned Rivera slow to the plate. Most closes are. Now Kevin Millar. 0 for 3. Good numbers against Rivera, including a homer. Ball one inside. Kevin homered yesterday against Tampa Bay. Had a big series against the Devil Race. Six for 11 with two homers. 0 for 3 tonight. So perhaps due to do something dramatic right here. Sot out to chat with Rivera. Orlando Cabrera is on deck. Two runs, four hits for New York. One run, four hits for Boston. Neither team has made an error. Five homers for Millar, only Manny Ramirez. With six is it more against New York than all of Major League Baseball this year. Way inside. Two and all. Cairo at second base, uh, very close to the bag, trying to keep Roberts as close as possible. Red Sox have had just one hit since the third inning. That was a Nixon single in the sixth. This would be a great time to get back in the hit column. The 2 0. Strike on the inside corner. Everything so far in this bat to Millar has been inside. And Cairo keeping Roberts close. The 2 1 pitch. It hit him. Would you agree, Jerry? It just doesn't look like the usual. Sharp Rivera. No, I agree. There's no question about that. Unusual to see him walk a guy to lead off an inning. Again, he, he continues to try to go inside against Millar and ends up hitting him right on the elbow. That's going to bring Gabe Kapler into the ball game. The run for Millar. So he is the go ahead run at first base. Very good speed on the bases now for the Red Sox for the two pinch runners. Roberts and Kapler aboard. What Joe Torre is questioning uh, is, is when Milan, Milan never got down to first base. He did eventually go back and tag it before being replaced by Kapler. It's been a long night. We're just about at the four and a half hour mark. For those who have stuck around and those of you still watching on TV, are being rewarded with a seat squirming finish. Red Sox would like to rally for a dramatic victory. Cabrera takes the ball low. And he's 0 for 3 tonight. Was grounded out, lined to center, and struck out in his last at bat. In the seventh against Tanyan Sturtz. And now Stottlemyre to the mound. Rivera trying to save it for Tanyan Sturge. The Red Sox trying to get Bronson Arroyo off the hook for what would be a tough loss. Bronson pitched well. And what a moment for Orlando Cabrera. Being indoctrinated into the Red Sox rivalry against the Yankees for the first time tonight. First Red Sox Yankee game for Orlando Cabrera. We have a memory that would last a lifetime if he could deliver a clutch hit here. He's hit safely in 26 of his last 30. Entering tonight. Without a base hit tonight. Kevin Euclid is on deck. Inside, close 
but a ball. Two and zero. Oh. So often the case when the Red Sox and Yankees get together, the tension palpable here at Yankee Stadium. 2 0 pitch. A strike. Borderline pitch. Tough to tell right now what's a strike and what isn't. Yeah, strike zone got awfully wide in the middle of this game, but it's tightened up here at the end. There again, the cutter on the inside corner. That's one that the right handed jumps back from. Hit on the ground, base hit in a right field. Dale Swain will wave Roberts around. Sheffield's throw is offline. It's a tie game. Now, even though Sheffield was playing fairly shallow out there in right field and, and was not that deep when he made the catch on the ground ball. With the speed of Roberts over at second base, he had no problem scoring. The throw was off the line by Sheffield. Cabrera taking that ball down and away. See, that fastball was supposed to be inside. You saw where Posada was set up. It goes away and right to the opposite field goes Cabrera with the base hit. Now a chance for the lead with Euclid up there. Check swing, it's a strike. Euclid's 0 for 3. He struck out twice. He never got the bat off his shoulder the last time up. Huge hit by Cabrera. He continues to make regular important contributions. Now Kapler at second. Cabrera at first. And a foul ball from Euclid's. He and Veritek have just not had good swings up there tonight, regardless of who the pitcher has been. Johnny Damon is on deck. Posada Giambi Olerud do up in the ninth for New York. Nicholas got a piece of that one. To stay alive at 0 2. Pitch the bottom of the ninth, regardless of whether it's a tie game or the Red Sox have the lead. He struck him out on a terrible pitch. Well, he's 0 for 4 with three strikeouts, and Veritek's 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. Second strikeout of the inning for. Rivera, but it's Cabrera's hit that has tied the ball game. Yeah, again, a mislocation by uh, Rivera. The ball's away instead of in. There's the throw from Sheffield. It's going to be off target. And the great speed of Roberts uh, certainly scores. Cabrera happy about getting the base hit and had to scuffle back to first base. You want to celebrate when he's safe on the back. Stand on the back and then celebrate. And he takes the ball down and in. Down he is fly to center. Homered into the upper deck and right. A solo shot leading off the third. Walked and stole second in the fifth. Grounded out. In the seventh. Chance to put the Red Sox on top. Go ahead, run at second. Strike on the corner. One and one. And again, Jerry, you get back to the issue. When will the rain come? Will it come? Now it's a tie game. Neither team wins. I'm thinking back of the play Manny Ramirez played in this game. That's yep. a huge play right now. Damon trying to dump it in shallow right center and it falls for a hit. Here comes Kapler to give them the lead. Red Sox three, Yankees two. What in the world was Kenny Lofton doing in center field? Now he lost. Now Lolly gagged that feel like he had no chance. That ball hung in the air a long time. It didn't land all that far from him. A bloop hit by Damon. And isn't it? Great to see the Red Sox give the Yankees one of those bloop hits in a key situation. It certainly has worked the other way more than once or twice in the past. I mean, it looked like he was going sideways instead of coming in, and Rivera can't believe that that ball was not caught by Kenny Lofton in center field. I can't believe it was not caught. I can't either when it was 
in the air. Thought it was a routine fly to center. Kapler scores. Cabrera to third. Now a look for some insurance from Bellhorn. He's another one of the guys who's had a tough night. Singled his first time up, but he's whiffed three in a row since. So Folk will have a chance to save it in the bottom of the ninth against Posada, Giambi, and Olerud. Just the fourth blown save of the year for Rivera, two of them against the Red Sox. Bellhorn takes the ball high. Now you hit it uh, early in this inning, Sean, when you mentioned he didn't look sharp, and you're exactly right. I mean, he has missed the location time after time he in this inning. He's zip on the ball like he usually has. Yeah. Well, it looks like he's flinging it up there. A hit here would make it much more comfortable for Folk. Broken bat. The bouncer to Cairo. He flips to first for the out. That ends the inning, but the Red Sox get two. Cabrera and Damon, the heroes, three to two Red Sox heading to the bottom of the ninth. Good change up. And Giambi sitting on fastball on the 2 0 count, hoping to tie the game up instead. Both pulls the string. Change up. Had him way out in front. Both former Oakland A's, they were not teammates. Folks, season in Oakland was last year when Giambi was already here in New York. There's the fastball for a strike. Two and two. Giambi with John Olderud on deck. Red Sox lead three to two. They led one to nothing. Trailed two to one from the fifth inning until the top of the ninth when they scored two to reclaim the lead. 2 2 pitch in the dirt. Stairs for the second out of the ninth. Now, Folk mixing his pitches beautifully in that uh, at bat by Giambi, changing speeds, the changeup, then he puts the fastball right by him. Upstairs again, above the belt. All the road takes a ball high. He has struck out twice with the home run in between. He homered leading off the fifth against Bronson Arroyo. Into the right field bleachers. At the time it gave New York a two to one lead. Out of play to the left one and one. If he could extend it Miguel Cairo due to hit next but Ruben Sierra. Has come into the on deck circle. Three runs six hits for Boston two runs four hits for New York. The Yankees were a couple of outs away from victory at a four and a half game lead. Now the Red Sox looking for that final out that would get them to within two and a half of the Yankees with two more games head to head this week and three more at Fenway Park next weekend. Folks, 2 1 Olerud strike at the knees over the outside part of the plate. Two and two. Here's the pitch. He just got a piece of it. Folk throwing pitches that could be remembered as the biggest of the season when we reflect back. In this critical game with the Red Sox trying to turn up the heat on the Yankees. And hand them just their second defeat of the year when leading after eight innings. Both by the Red Sox just outside. And when Janelle would come down to a three and two pitch with two outs. Hope tries to put him away with the fastball and just missed the outside corner. Let's see if he goes to the changeup here three and two. 
Through the three and two fastball by Giambi, the three two to all the road. Change up for strike three. The Red Sox win. A great catch. Johnny Damon, the offensive star of the night. And the pitching brilliant as the Yankees did not have a hit after the infield hit by Lofton in the fifth inning. A 1 2 3 ninth for Folk with back to back strikeouts of Giambi and Olaru to end it. A huge win for the Red Sox as they seem headed for defeat. Just about everything working against them with Rivera on the mound. The 79 and one mark for the Yankees when leading after eight. Well, that's two L's now for the Yankees when leading after eight. Both at the hands of the Red Sox, who are right on the heels of the New Yorkers now, two and a half games behind. The lead in the wild card is six. The Angels are still playing out in Anaheim.